Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for a new RimWorld series. We are playing with both the Royalty and the Ideology DLCs. And for those of you new to RimWorld, do not worry. I myself am pretty new. I've done about 10 hours total to make sure I'm completely familiar with the controls. I played a little bit probably about a year ago before the Ideology expansion. But now I'm really looking forward to getting really involved in RimWorld and getting a huge colony and, and really exploring what the game has to offer. I think most people would agree that Crash Landed is sort of the default way to play RimWorld. For our first series, we are going to do Crash Landed, but I am really looking forward to doing some of the other scenarios as well. Now here's where I'm looking for some healthy arguments in the comments about who's better, Cassandra Classic or Randy Random. For a long time, I think most people were agreed that Randy Random was the way to go, but some people are saying that Cassandra will just build you up, build you up, and then kick the snot out of you. For this playthrough, I think we're going to go with Randy Random because I like the idea that will go from one extreme to another, and I think it makes for better YouTube watching. We, of course, are going to go for losing is fun, because losing can be fun. Now, I understand you can go to custom and crank the threat all the way up to 500%, but for this first playthrough, uh, we're going to take it a little easier on old Echo. Now, normally I'd like to play it commitment mode. I think it's more fun when you have everything to lose, but when you're recording videos, you really need the ability to be able to reload. There's just way too many problems that happen. Crashes. I forget to hit the record button, etc, etc. So we're going to go with the reload anytime mode. Here it shows the factions that are going to be on the planet with us. Look, and our seed. We'll just go with a simple echo right there. While we're generating this world, you can see we are using a couple of mods. I'm not a big mod guy. I kind of like the vanilla experience, the way the developers brought it to you. So we're using Camera Plus so I can zoom in further. Color mood bars so it's easy to distinguish when a pawn is about to break. And we're also using a mod that allows the materials around the planet to look a little bit different as far as color goes. It makes it easier for me to see as soon as we hit a tile, hey, this is gold, this is steel, etc. Now we get the wonderful job of picking a site. I think we're going to keep it pretty regular for this first run and go with some sort of temperate forest. But I'd want one that's close to a lot of folks. That way we have plenty of trade partners. We have the Empire nearby. We have some pirate places that we can destroy. Wow, this is looking pretty interesting right here. Now all I'm doing here is trying to find a location that is close to all this beautiful activity. I mean, look at everybody within range. Lots of nice roads, lots of different factions for lots of great stories. So I'm going with this, to me, unknown color that is a little lighter than this color, which means it's temperate forest. Now I am also going to click on the terrain button down here and see what the tile has. I want to make sure it has some of the more quality materials, such as marble. I think we're going to try our luck right here. It's a good century located spot between all these places. It has a 50 out of 60 growing period in case we want to grow some crops. It's relatively flat and it has some marble. And now we have to pick the ideology on the ideology on. Uh-huh. Now we could go with the classic. We just pick a belief system and go with it. But they've recently introduced this sort of fluid thing that allows you to develop it over time. And I kind of like that idea. Now, I have no idea which way the game is going to take us, but I kind of like the idea of being like really technology savvy and kind of like the paladins of the Rim world. Now, this, for instance, is just picking the symbol, but I have no idea as we head down that path if it's going to be a bad idea. We will see. Oh, now we need to pick our beginning meme. So thinking about what our beginning meme would be, I like the transhumanists because it kind of represents the fact that we want to develop with technology. But I also like the idea of the the good guy faction going with the collectivists. And let's be honest, it's a lower impact, which means, you know, less problems for us in the future. We'll try that out and move on. You can spend a ton of time customizing each little aspect of your ideology on... 
That's what we're going to go with. I went with the Unified Cooperative. It sounds really good. We're still Arcists. And basically, we believe in the Great Outsider, but only Arcotex can communicate directly with the Outsider. And when we die, each person's consciousness is accepted or rejected by the Arcotex. In the end, they'll find the people who best present themselves as worthy partners to the machine god consciousness. Now we get to customize our precepts. I'm going to go with the slavery is bad ideology because let's be honest. And then there's some other in here that are just funny. Female clothing, pants and shirt. Male clothing, just pants. Let's keep it equal, shall we? Most of these seem to be pretty standard. We did get that tripled work drive because of our collectivists, which I think is pretty cool. Drug use, medical only. Let's flip that down to medical or social. We might be able to use some smoke leaf to kind of relax our palms just a little bit. Everything else looks pretty standard. Coming down here to the rolls. Now here's where the rolls really kind of bite you in the butt. You can see here that our prime chair roll required apparel is an authority cap. That's not as good as a helmet if you're going into combat. But we'll... We'll keep it like this for a little while and see how it goes. The moral guide, the unified commissar. And apparently they have to have a cape. But it doesn't mean we need to select these folks for a little while. Well, the buildings and relics, we'll keep it pretty standard. I changed the... I randomized this few times because the other one kind of looked like a pentagram, which didn't seem to fit with the flavor of our collectivist archists. Apparently, we really love the bunny rabbits. Instead of bunnies, let's go with dogs. On the dog front, we have the Yorkshire Terrier, the Labrador, and the Husky. I wish I could just pick dogs. I guess we could pick all three dogs, huh? Oh, and now the appearance. Wow, you can get really detailed with this. You're good with whatever type of hair, but on the beard front, yeah, we all like beards. Let's keep it frequent, shall we? Oh, wait a minute. We actually gotta take off the no beard. We'll make it uncommon. Just in case a pawn doesn't want a beard, we'll make it okay. And after a ridiculous amount of customization, let's go forward. For those of you new, you have to pick three characters. You have eight to choose from, or you can just completely cheese randomize it and keep going until you get the pawn that you want. Kind of the same way we do in Ani. But there's some things specifically that we're looking for. A, you definitely want some cooks. Now this guy seems to be a great cook. But he's also a nudist. He doesn't like to do any dumb labor, like hauling stuff around or cleaning. He just has a lot of negatives. So I think we're going to take him and drag him down. And we're definitely never going to pick a pyromaniac. So let's take them off. Give me a few minutes and I'll show you what I've come up with. All right, here's what we come up with. It wasn't a great selection. We have Scrooge, who is a medical assistant and a drifter. The positives is they have a burning passion in medical and in animals and some passion in construction, mining, and cooking. We definitely needed a cook. Amadeus likes doing animals, crafting, social, and intellectual, probably a future researcher, and maybe a someone who can talk to the prisoners. Unfortunately, they are a wimp, so any sort of pain, it's not going to be a great deal for them. Which reminds me, old Scrooge also does not learn very well. Very slow learner. And then Vicky, a mute, who, well, incapable of social because of it. Uh, but they do like animals and melee and a little bit of mining. Wasn't thrilled about Vicky, but the other options didn't look well. I was close to taking Coyote. She's a bisexual, brawling, depressive. But the depressive means a permanent mood effect of minus 12 would be really not good. But they had a strong social and melee and construction and crafting. All very useful. And then next up on the list was Tycho. But unfortunately, as much as I wanted Tycho, who was really into shooting and melee, uh, they were a pyromaniac. And that's just rule number one. No pyromaniacs. We had a couple of nice tasters, but as with life, this one had an artery blockage. 
And this one had a prosthetic arm, which is normally a plus, but they were also a nudist. No, thank you. And then we had Luckhard, which I really liked him until I saw that he had a chemical interest. We don't need somebody smoking all the smoke leaf all the time. So with these three faded pawns, we will launch. You got a nice little team skill area. It's not a great start, gotta be honest. And here we are. Now the general story for those of you who are absolutely new to RimWorld, you basically wake up and you get to escape pods and you land on this RimWorld. We will instantly pause. I guess we could wait for them to come down. Here we go. And now we instantly pause. Here's all our goodies. And we can check out the map. My guess is this is an ancient danger with lots of bad folks. But look at this. Some nice compacted steel. Couple of water sources. All right, all right. Ooh, some ancient vehicles. Looks like there's at least six steam geysers which will be really good for some geothermal power. A quick look around the map hasn't discovered anything that would really scare us off from this tile, so I think we will go ahead and settle. Step one is we need to make sure that we allow everything around here. Long story short, pawns won't touch it unless they are allowed to. So we will click the allow, highlight over everything, and it kind of makes sure that, all right, everybody's good. Now, what you can also do is just right-click and say, Unforbid All Items, and then everything is allowed on the map. Now, I was debating on moving in here, but this is undiscovered. In other words, there could be bad things in here. So before we go in there and possibly lose the game outright, let's go ahead and arm everybody up. Oh, look, we have a Yorkshire Terrier named Buckeye. Hey, buddy. Now, Vicky's the one that really likes doing melee, so we are going to equip Vicky with the Plasteel Knife. Scrooge is not much of anything, so we'll just give him the regular revolver. And then Amadeus has a little bit of shooting skill, but doesn't enjoy it. Since Vicky is our old melee specialist, we're going to make sure that she wears the flak vest and the flak pants. She will be armored up. Oh, there's even a, a flak helmet. I can put that on too. In order to queue up the prioritizing, you just hold shift before you select the option and they'll do it one after another. And now what we can do is we can draft everybody and we can set up right here. We'll put old Vicky right here at the front of the door. Uh, apparently Vicky has cryo sleep sickness, which is causing them to vomit everywhere. And all that for nothing, Buckeye just walked in there, and it's just a tree. All right, we will undraft these and put them to work and start to... Let's build this up a little bit. We'll start off with wooden walls because that's pretty much all we have. What I'm picturing right now is a couple of small bedrooms and a recreation room just to get us started. We also need to add a zone for all the dumping that we're going to do. This seems to be closer back here, so we can just make this a standard stockpile zone for now. Eventually, we'll separate everything by where it's supposed to go, but for now, this will work out well. Now, while they're doing that, we're going to head to the priority menu. We're going to go with the manual priorities. This system is very similar to the way Oni does it. Everything goes from left to right. So, for instance, a 1 here will be done first, then a 1 over here. And after they get done doing all the ones, they'll do all the twos and then all the threes. We always set firefighting and patients to be one. And that way they always know to, hey, if you're a patient, go to bed. And then we'll set doctoring to two. I think bed rest should be pretty important too as well. Remember when you're doing your priority list, when one thing is, when everything's important, nothing's important. Vicky can do some mining because they like it. And apparently... They all like to hunt, so we will make everybody with the ability to hunt. We'll refine this a little bit more as we go, but for now this will work. We've basically finished with this room here. We definitely need to chop everything out of it though, and then build some beds. We do not want them to have to deal with that. For now, just to make sure that they have some beds, we'll just put three standard wooden beds in here. We also need them to be able to do some recreation. We'll put a small wooden torch, followed by a nice chess table. 
We want to have more than one area to do recreation, so we'll also put a nice horseshoe pin over here. And we cannot forget about poor Buckeye. Buckeye will have a nice little wooden sleeping box right here. Apparently, Vicky is taking a break to meditate. This seems like a decent place for our fueled stove. I don't want to set up power yet until we're sure what we have. So let's go with fueled stove for now, which means we just throw wood into it. And we're all going to make sure that they have a place to sit while do that. For now, just a stool. The dining chair costs a little bit more wood. And we'll put a nice table for everybody to eat at. This seems good. A couple of stools. Beautiful. Now we just need them to get to work. And Scrooge is cloud watching. Uh, no, you are prioritizing working on that. We will prioritize Scrooge's construction and make hauling up to four so they don't want to go all around the map and just do hauling. So for right now, it's not a huge deal. We have 44 prepackaged meals right now inside of our little storage area. We're going to put everybody in construction. This is taking too long and they're just more interested in hauling, but they suck at it. So they keep botching the construction. Come on, Vicky, you can do it with your construction skill of zero. Scrooge and Buckeye have found some places to sleep. Everybody else is not going to be pleased. Now, the initial plan was just to have the beds available for their first night at sleep. That way, we don't have any minor break risks like Vicky here. Vicky's mood is not great. It's only going down because, uh, well, they slept in the cold, they slept on the ground, they slept outside, etc., etc. So, since it's taking them so long, we're going to prioritize these beds so the next night they don't sleep but eventually the, everybody's going to have their own bedrooms that we can make a little bit nicer. Now that we're in our second day, we need to be careful. You can see these packaged survival mirrors are deteriorating because, well, they're sitting outside. You can see that they deteriorate at a rate of 0.25 per day. It's not too shabby, but it's definitely something we want to keep an eye out. So we're going to bring the foodstuffs in here. To do that, we go to a new zone. We'll say, hey, this is our new stockpile zone right here. Isn't it great? But then we can click on it, click storage, and then say, hey, what do we want to allow in here? Well, we don't want anything rotten. In fact, we can start by clearing everything. And then just selecting foods. I think we'll also bring our medicine in here now that I think about it. And we'll eventually have different little storage areas for all of our stuff. Especially, we don't want all of our building materials to be sitting around all of our animal corpses, etc., etc. Oh, look at this. They finally, all three of them have beds. I mean, all three of them are still not in a room yet, but we're getting there. This was definitely the problem, having so little construction. We have a one, a zero, and Scrooge with a five. But we'll eventually have some new folks. So in addition to our stockpile zones, we also need to make sure our home zone is set and correct. Right now, when we click on expand home zone, this is what it is. Now, this means they'll stop any fires and clean any rooms inside the home zone. For now, I think it's fine. We will definitely keep modifying it a little bit. Now, looking down here, there's a few urns that we might be able to use. So, we're going to uninstall these and reinstall them right in our beautiful our dining rooms. Oh, look at all the wonderful horses. Oh, we'd love to have some horses. Let's see if we can't tame these guys. Try to tame them all and then build them a nice big area. For that, we need our beautiful fence area. We'll add a gate. And then we need to go find the beautiful pet marker. There, pen marker. It goes right here. This is considered a medium-sized pen based on how we built it, which is able to keep 1.3 cows. So I got a feeling not all the horses will be able to graze off of this area. We are going around and deconstructing all these columns. There have been a couple of marble ones, which the great thing about them is they deconstruct into blocks, which you can then use to build other things without actually making the blocks. For that, we will need a little art bench. I think we'll put it right here. Oh, it doesn't like being outside. Never mind. Since our pen's a little on the smaller side, I think we're just going to pick a male and a female. This female is age seven. This male is age 18, so it's the youngest male that we have. So the rest, we will cancel. 
Now, you may be wondering why we're prioritizing something as silly as an art bench. Well, the reason is simple. We want to get this area looking a little bit more impressive, so our pawns are a little happier. Right now, it's awful. Even with our crappy urns. We've been here a few days, so now it's time to name the faction and the settlement. We'll just name the faction something generic and not original the Arcists. And we'll call this place, uh... The Ridge. I wanted to highlight something. The, the goal of putting the floors and everything down was because we wanted dull bedrooms. When your... When your pawns have an awful bedroom, they get a minus four to their mood. But a dull bedroom, I think it only has a minus one or a minus zero. So, a dull bedroom's okay, awful bedroom is not. But I'm like, they're identical, what's the difference? Well... The difference happens to be this end table. This is an awful end table, whereas this is a normal end table. So we're going to build a new one. And see how that one goes. Wonderful. So we just got hit by our first psychic drone, which is going to make every male colonist feel a wave of anxiety and anger. This ought to be good. At last, we have four dull bedrooms. Which is great, as you can see over here in Scrooge, they did not sleep in a dull bedroom last night. Unfortunately, they still are suffering from that low psychic drone, but they are still saying they slept in the cold. Which I don't really understand, because it's 77 degrees in here. I did switch it to Fahrenheit. You can do that in the options. For all you fine European folks that were used to seeing it in Celsius. Uh, I play Ani in Celsius, so it's a half and half. It's a give and take. All right, our wooden art bench is completed. I know it's a weird thing to prioritize, but we just want a small, we just want a couple of small sculptures. I'm gonna do it twice. And hopefully they'll be good enough. We're gonna go to details though. We're gonna find out what the best worker is that we have when it comes to art. And that would be Vicky with a three. Yuck, this isn't gonna go well, but it's better than nothing, right? So we're just going to go to any worker and click Vicky. And we're going to say, hey, we want it to be built out of marble. Come on, Vicky, you can do it. Please don't fail because we don't have a lot of marble. Looks like we've been blessed with a cargo pod. Bunch of warg meat. I'll take it. So we'll just click allow on this and they'll go get the warg meat and bring it back here. And we will definitely make some simple meals with it. Now, if you've never made the meals, here's a couple of things you got to do. You click on your stove, you go to bills, and we're going to add a bill. We're just going to do some simple meals. And right now, we are in the process of setting up our butchering place, but we just got that meat, so that's what made us want to do this now. We're going to go into details. We're going to say we want to do this until we have X. So we click in here, we go do until you have X. I'm going to say, hey, we want 20. And we're going to pause when we're satisfied. So in other words... We will keep going until there's 20, and then we won't start again until there's 10. For the worker, we're going to pick Scrooge because he's got that 7 cooking and doesn't mind doing it if I remember correctly. There it is. He's got the passion for cooking as well. So it'll be Scrooge doing it. And now for the allowables. We're going to say any sort of meat except human meat. We wanted to make sure there's no human meat in there. Our vegetarian, we're not going to allow them out of the vegetarian meals because we're going to save our veggies for some pemmican. But we can also make simple meals out of eggs and milk. Oh, I almost forgot. We want to light that area up. And we're not doing any sort of electricity quite yet. So we're going to put a couple of torch lamps. And here's a good trick here. You can see Scrooge. He's taking the meals. He's cooking the meat. And then he puts it into the, into the stockpile here. Well... If we add a stockpile right here beside him, and we say we want to store, we want to clear it all, and we only want to store meals. That way, they'll put the meals there, and then the meals will be transferred over here. So, let's put this as preferred and see what he does. I think because this is preferred he'll skip by it so we'll say this is preferred until this is there we go now he only grabs it he puts the meals there and it's a little quicker now eventually he'll only be getting right here he'll only be going right here for the meats 
But for now, all the meat's stored in here because we got it off the map. But eventually, our butcher's table will get all the meats. Finally, our psychic drone is ending. We're finishing up some chopping to make sure that we have enough wood. I think we're going to have to expand this fence. I just realized no one was using the chess table, and it's because they had nowhere to sit. Vicky's definitely taking her sweet time finishing our marble statue. Come on, Vicky. So one thing RimWorld is really good at is explaining why things are working or not working. I was wondering why these haven't been tamed and brought into our little pen yet. Well, it's pretty simple. There's no food that we have that we can use to tame them. Which is normally like berries. So we're going to scroll out a little bit, find the berries, and harvest them up. Then we'll have some berries to be able to tame the horses. Alright, looks like we've gotten our first raid from the Poison Hunters. They will prepare for a while and then attack. It's, it's one person with a poor steel knife. Yeah, that's not going to work out well for you. We're going to let our folks get a nice... Good night's sleep before we draft them. I mean, in typical RimWorld fashion, we were going to underprepare for this and then pay for it in the end. Ooh, look, another urn. All right, the Poison Hunter is beginning their assault. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all three of the pawns, and then we're going to hit draft, which stops everything they they're doing and lets them be our under our direct control. So we're just going to bring them over here. And we're going to put Vicky in front, and these folks on the side. And somebody please hit them. Alright, let's see. It looks like they're going after Scrooge, so we're going to back Scrooge up a little bit. Come on. Nope. You hit the wrong person. Come on, Scrooge. Oh, there we go. So let's see what kind of problems we dealt with. We got punched in the torso, and then we have two knife cuts this isn't too bad we will undraft everybody and what about you there hunya hun they have cataracts in both eyes they've got a few bolt action rifle shots it looks like they're doing okay never mind i was like how long until they die well the 87 year old woman has already died i just didn't see the little x but yeah here they're already dead which means we can't do anything with their clothes or anything but we did get another steel knife which we don't really care about but we'll allow it maybe we'll trade it now because we don't really have anything to start fire to burn this body i think we're just gonna unfortunately bury it we'll put a grave back here they did drop a bunch of silver though now this isn't too bad so we're just gonna use herbal medicine we better actually use the better medicine because it doesn't look like any of our folks are doing good doctoring and that's because out of all the folks, Scrooge is our only doctor. So let's move this up a little bit. Here we go. And now we can see all those bandages, all those wounds are getting healed up. Now that we've solved that, let's see who's better at this. Alright, Amadeus has a doctoring of four, whereas Vicky has of two, so... They won't do our doctoring, so just in case Scourge gets hit again, Amadeus will take care of him. So I was wondering why we still, even though collecting the berries, were not able to tame these stallions. Well, it's because it's not in their diet, I'm assuming. So we're going to make a little bit of kibble. So back to our kitchen, we have our butchering table, which is where you make the kibble. We're going to do this, what, five times? We don't need a ton of kibble. And we're going to allow any meats and hay that we can get. Now when Scrooge wakes up, they'll go off and do that. As long as we have some hay or something else. I'm not sure that we do. We're going to have to do some hunting. We still haven't finished this wonderful marble statue. But I think that'll be for our next episode. Most of our pawns are doing alright in our mood. Scrooge is currently healing and doing okay. So we've seen to stabilize into this settlement. I'm pretty happy about it. I'm going to keep learning how to play. If you have any recommendations or tips, feel free to throw it in the comments. Also, we have a couple of quests to hit up next time. And we're going to be looking to see what do we want out of this colony? What do we want to do? Which is where I will also be asking for your recommendations in the comments below. 
Tell me what you liked and didn't like about the series. Otherwise, I'll talk to you next time.